السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین ولاقبۃ المتقین وصلاۃ وسلام علیہ اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین و علیہ محمد و علیہ علیہ و اصحاب ہی اجمعین علیہ یمدین اما بعد قول اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ فی القرآن مجید و الفرقان الحمید اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان اللہ لا یغیر ما بی قوم ما بی قوم حتیٰ یغیر ما بی انفسہم صدق اللہ مولانا نظیم و صدق رسول الکریم اما بعد قول اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ فی القرآن مجید و الفرقان الحمید فی شان حبیب ہی ان اللہ و ملاکاتہ یسلون علی النبی یا ایہ الدین آمنو صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم تسلیمہ ٹوڈے آور ٹاپک از ہاؤ ٹو برنگ اباؤٹ چینج سیلف ریفارمیشن اے نارمل کوشچن پیپل سی دیٹ آئی وانٹ ٹو چینج مائی سیلف آئی وانٹ ٹو چینج مائی فیملی مائی مومی از ناٹ کوونگ اے سیلف مائی وائف از ناٹ کوونگ اے سیلف اور مائی فادر از ناٹ ریڈی نماز ہاؤ ٹو برنگ اباؤٹ چینج ریمبر وین ایور یو وانٹ ٹو ڈو سم تھنگ یو وین ایور یو وانٹ ٹو گو اینی فیلڈ لیٹ سے یو وانٹ ٹو بیکم اے سکسیزفل بزنس مین Where you go, you go to the entrepreneurs, those seminars, and then they tell you, you take this step, 10 steps, and I can make you a successful businessman. You want to make money, 10 steps, I can make you a rich person. So you, whichever field you go to, you look up to someone. You start taking those advices. Who is the best man who came in this dunya in this field? Self-reformation. Or reforming the community. Or making people better. Remember, in the history of humanity, in the history of humanity, No one could ever brought change to this dunya like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. With his message, he transformed humanity and is still transforming. His message is still working. 14 and 40 years ago, he came with his message and look at that today people are becoming Muslim because of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's message. Go learn about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How his attachment was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How he was with his family how he was with children how he was with his friends how he was with his community either muslims or non muslims how he was with his enemies subhanallah if you go and read about rasulullah sallam and take advice from rasulullah sallam step by step if you work through you cannot just change yourself you can change your family you can change the community and after that you can change the world remember change is starts from you If you are not a good person, you cannot give advice to other people that you become a good person. Yeah. Rasulullah s.a.w. for 40 years, for 40 years he lived in Makkah. And he showed to Makkah people through his behavior, through his character, he convinced everyone. After that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote Rasulullah s.a.w. Ya Rasulullah, now you announce that you are a prophet and this is the message of Islam. It would be hypocritical for a person who is uh, secretly abusing his wife at home, but outside he is advocating uh, women's rights. It would be hypocritical for that man who doesn't wake up for Fajr time, but he's telling his children, Putra, wake up and read Nimaz. Or son, wake up and read Nimaz. And then he comes to me, Imam Sahib, I've been telling my son for a long time, but he's not listening to me because he sees you. Yeah, you don't wake up in a time. It would be hypocritical for that woman who's not curving herself and always telling her children, Daughters, that you should cover yourself. You are not covering yourself. They see you as a role model. Remember, action speaks louder than words. Once, uh, a woman came to Abdul Qadir Jilani, and she said, uh, give some advice to my son. I've come from very far. Give some advice to my son. He eats sugar cane. Good. He eats good a lot. Abdul Qadir Jilani, he said, come after one week. And she said, okay, I'll come back after one week. So she went all the way back to her house and after one week she came back and Abdul Qadir said to the boy, you should not be eating gold. And she was like, you sent me all the way back there, you called me back after one week just to say that? You could have said that on that day. Do you know what Abdul Qadir said? Abdul Qadir Jilani said, at that time, I used to eat good so much. I eat good myself a lot. That's the reason I never gave him advice because advice would not affect him. Advice never affects others if you are doing it yourself because your actions are going against your words The words are never gonna affect now. Let me give you some steps how to self reform People normally ask this question the youngsters especially I'm involved in activities the wrong activities sinful activities Where shall I begin 
Now, first of all, you should know that you are not an angel. You are not a prophet. We are tempted towards wrong things. Temptations are embedded in us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that Zuyyana lin nasi hubbu shahawad. I have engraved temptations in you, O human beings, and they're not gonna go anywhere until you die. They will go when your ru will go. Otherwise, you are tempted to don't think, no, I'm a, such a bad person. No, you are likely to make mistakes. I am likely to make mistakes. That is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put Toba there. That is the reason Toba is there. If we were not likely to make mistakes, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put Toba there? He knew it. That there is Toba, so then people make mistake, they come and repent, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wash away all your sins. Allah does not expect you to become perfect person. As Rasulullah sallallahu said, strive according to your ability and leave rest of that upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, this life is like a race track. Why? Some people are running very fast. Five days in Imaz, Ramzan, mashallah, tahajjud, and wafil, everything. Some are only doing five limas. Some are every year they go for Hajj or Umrah. Some goes once in their lifetime. So they're different, different running methods. Some are running, some are slow walking, some are doing sa'i, fast walking, some are very slow. As long as you're on the track, that is the main thing. No one can claim that they are perfect. The temptation towards evil things, it is likely to happen. But can you control your temptation? That's the question. You have no money in your pocket. You have no money in your bank, but you want to buy a very expensive car. Now there you go. Can you control yourself? Someone, you like someone, either boy or girl. Huh? You like someone. Can you control yourself? Huh? Woman wants to have a kitchen and her husband uh, is not earning that much. And woman are like after her husband, you are not earning that much money. Look at her husband. He got her a beautiful kitchen for 10,000 pounds, 15,000 pounds. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written in the taqdeer, you cannot get more than that. You cannot earn more than that. Stop forcing your husbands to get me this and get me that. Go and look at his expenses. Go and look at what he's earning. How much one of the boy came, he said, my wife is saying, get me gold. And she's not understanding, I cannot buy that much gold for her because I am working and I need to fulfill all this house mortgage and or rent or and, and the bills and everything I cannot buy. I'm like, why these wives don't understand that how much my husband is earning, if he's earning less, why can't you just ask for the small things? Don't you know how much he's earning? Are, are you not living in the same house? You know, this is where you are encouraging your husband to do haram. Go and work two, two jobs. And then again, another complaint comes. Why are you never home? Why he's never home because of you. Because you cannot control your temptations. Rasulullah says, Adam Every son of Adam makes mistakes. Every son of Adam, he makes mistakes. But the best amongst them are those who repent. Best amongst them are those who do Tawbah as soon as they realize they made mistake. Go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sit down and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, I've made this mistake. Yes, I've done this wrong. Yes, I did wrong with my wife. Yes, I did wrong with my parents. Yes, I've been earning haram. Yes, I've been taking drugs. Yes, I've been drinking. Yes, I've been going on wrong places. Cry in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Arabic. Imam sahab, give me some uh, dua in Arabic. You don't need to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Arabic. Go talk to Allah in Persian. Go talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Punjabi, Urdu, English. He understand every language. Or don't even talk. Just cry. Allah understands your tears. Allah understands your emotions. He knows what's going through your heart, what's going through your mind. Talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn the light off. Believe me, that's the best relationships you can have. Pure relationships you can have. Talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your own. Sit down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give book to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He made him sit in Ghare Hira on his own. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give book Torah to Musa alayhi salam, made him sit on his own. He separated himself from dunya for 30 nights and then he added 10 more. Sit down, our children, what they say? I'm bored. Bored, getting bored is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm telling you. As our scholar says, it is better for you to sit alone than sitting in a wrong company. And it is better for you to sit in a good company 
rather than sitting alone. Once you have made Toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make a list of bad things you've been doing. Make a list. I've been doing this, that. I've been not good with my wife. I'm not good with my parents. I'm not good with my wife. Everyone thinks I'm good with my wife. Every wife thinks I'm good with my husband if my husband is wrong. And every husband thinks I'm good with my wife if my wife is wrong. Both of you together go to someone, a neutral person. Go, don't go to wife's parents and don't go to husband's parents. Do you know why? Husband's parents are going to take husband's side and wife's parents are going to take wife's side. Go to someone neutral and then tell him, look, this is what she's doing and this is what I am doing. Tell us who's wrong. Then he will tell you, take that advice. Now start making progress. List down all those things what you are doing. Start from the easiest one. Easiest one. Let's say I'm not reading Nimaz. Start at least start from Nimaz. I'm not good with my parents. Start from respecting your parents. Ramzan is coming. I'm not very good. There. Normally I keep like let's say 15 fast, 20 fast. Try to work and, 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 and do 30 fast. Try to talk to your company and take all 30 days off. Or at least get last 10 days off. Sit at the cough in masjid. This is how you make a list and start from the easiest thing. Go to the next, then go to the next, then go to the next. If you think you cannot work, go to someone. He can guide you. Look, this is how you take this step. It is more easy for you if you go this way. So people who have already been to the destination, who been through these things, go to them. They will tell you the way you are taking is very hard when very long way. It's going to take you time even on a first step. Half the way you will give up. Go to the person who knows. He will guide you step by step what you're supposed to be doing. To be honest, this is a normal question. I've done this sin. Is Allah going to forgive me? I'm like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you have committed shirk. The major sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, illa wa antum muslimun. Do not die as a mushrik. Make sure you die as a Muslim. That's the only sin I'm not going to forgive after your death. Every sin I will forgive. Even though you have committed shirk, you associated someone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You became non-Muslim. Allah says, read kalima, become Muslim, I've forgiven you. Even that sin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to forgive you. Never mind any other sins. Just with the bottom of your heart, go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man taqarraba minni shibran. That if you take one step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, taqarrabtu minhu dhira'an. I take 10 steps towards him. But the condition is you take the first step. Allah never said, I'll take 10 steps and then you take one step. Now Allah says, Man taqarraba minni. First who takes one step, shibran, taqarrabtu minhu dhira'an. Then I will take 10 steps towards him. Man atani yamshi, the one who comes towards me by walking, who walks towards me. Huh? Then Allah says, Atai tuhu har walatan. I run towards him. But the condition is you walk towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. Allah doesn't run towards you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went in Badr, then angels came. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went towards Taif, he was stoned, he bled, then angels came. Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam was thrown towards fire, he was going towards fire. Then Allah said to fire, cool down. Hmm? Musa alayhi salam took his people, went all the way to the bank of that river, the sea. Then Allah separated that sea. First you have to take step. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help comes and Allah promises that anyone, whatever sins you have committed, just come to me with the sincere heart. Sincere heart. I promise you I will, I will forgive you. You know what? Me Toba. Toba is literally, I was reading in dictionary about Toba. Toba is a person got to a junction, there's a junction, and he wanted to take right, but unknowingly or however or purposely he took left. Now, when he went a bit further left side, he realized that took a wrong turn. Now, if he stands there and he's sitting there and crying and, and, and he's cursing himself, why did I take left turn? Is that crying and cursing going to correct his mistake? Until he comes back to the point where he made a mistake and then start taking the right turn, going towards the right direction. This is called Toba. Stopping what you are doing and then start doing good things. That's what calls Toba. Let's say unknowingly that happened again. Go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never come in a trap of shaitan. People say to me, I've been 50 years in Mamsab, I've been doing this. So uh, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to forgive me? Allah will forgive you. Do 10,000 times that sin. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving you this uh, good news 
that the doors of forgiveness are open until your last breath or until the sun rises from the west. That is the promise of Rasulullah. Doors of forgiveness are open. If doors of forgiveness are open, why Allah left it open? If He does not want to forgive you, why He left the doors open? Of course, Allah Subhanahu wants to forgive you. That's why He left the doors open. So, whenever or however, or whatever sin you have committed, go sit down and talk to Allah Subhanahu. Rasulullah Sallam says, whenever you have committed something bad. Follow it with something good deed. Follow it with some good deed. That good deed will wash away your bad deed. Let's say you've done something. Go read Nawafil. Say, next day I'm going to keep fast. I'm going to fast for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I've committed that sin. And, or do something good. Start helping your mom. Be good with your wife. Be good with your children. Start teaching something to your children good. Anything good you do, sadaqa. Anything you do good, inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have umid with, with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wash away your sin how long you have to strive in a path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep fighting against your temptations allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says hatta yaqal yaqeen. until mouth comes to you until death comes to you when people comes to us and they say that i've been going through these troubles i've been reading nimaz as well but still troubles are not finishing i said who told you troubles gonna finish are you alive or you're dead People who died gone in graves, inshallah, if they have given good news, troubles are finished for them. This is our, you know, wrong mentality towards Islam. You read Nimaz, your troubles finish. Who told you troubles finish? Troubles are never gonna finish. Until you are here, troubles are never gone. Huh? Learn how to face troubles. Nimaz gives you sober towards troubles. Huh? Nimaz gives you sober towards the trials come in your path. Huh? Who were the best people who came in this dunya? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Anul and Sahaba Ikram. Go read about their life. They were out of troubles. They were the people with the most of the troubles. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Allah gives you trouble. He wants to basically, okay, He wants to test you through trials. Then how good you are. Whenever you want to get to the next level, and that happened in companies as well. When you want to become a manager, you've got to run around. You've got to do so much work. Then they see the ability, the capabilities in you. Then they give you the post. The one who's already lazy. We're not doing anything. No, no, no. He's not capable for that post. So anywhere, wherever you see, you got to work hard to get to the next day. It's PS5, PS4, you're playing or Xbox, whatever you're playing. Forget to the next. You get to the next stage, you got to kill all those monsters. That every stage is hard and hard and tough and the tough and the tough. Every stage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test you. So never think this trouble is going anywhere. That one thing, one belief, get rid of that belief that trouble is going to finish. You're facing a trouble. Huh? And it's about to go. Get ready for next one. I'm telling you, get ready for next one. If someone's wife is not good, huh? the parents will be good. Or that, let's say the parents are good, but they're going to have problem from money side. If the money okay, wife okay, children okay, parents okay, huh? he will have some kind of disease, some kind of illness. This dunya has been constructed in that way so that we go through troubles. Why we go through troubles? Because this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided he can go in Jannah or he can go in Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the feet that we keep death in our mind all the time because death, death will tell you. Death is the only door which gives you this news that you are not here forever. You are going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Death is the only door which tells you, look, these troubles are not forever because you are not forever. And all these temptations and these cars you have and the beautiful houses you have because you are not forever, these houses are not forever. So if we have death in our mind, Allah will stay in our mind. That's the reason Allah subhanahu wa bil akhiratihum yuqinun. What is the quality of a mu'min? Allah dina yu'minuna bil ghaib, they yakin in ghaib. Akhirat is ghaib. And the last sign Allah gives in the Quran, wa bil akhiratihum yuqinun, and they believe in akhirah. As long as Akhira is in your mind, believe me, you will face any difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the feet to understand our deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the feet to nurture our children according to the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.